Well, hello there. It is so good to see you. I'm Mary Sue, and I'm so grateful that you're here. So today we're going to take a look at what energies are for the week ahead, June 17th through the 23rd. We're going to um, take a look at each of the zodiac signs. The timestamps are in the description box below. I'm going to actually start with the earth sign, then fire, then water, and then we'll do the air signs at the end. And happy birthday to all of those of you that have um, a Gemini. And I have that birthdays this week and cancer we're moving into your sign this week so happy birthday to you too all right so let's go ahead and get started we're going to start with Virgo so Virgo let's see what is on the horizon for you this week wow beautiful energy okay so you have something that has there's this energy you have a five of cups right there's almost a sense here of regret that maybe you have spent too much time or too much energy on either a relationship, a project, a situation that's in your life. And it's kind of like you you wish you could get some of that time, that energy, that perhaps even love back. It's almost like you're concentrating on what maybe you have lost in a situation, right? Because there is this sense that it is time for you to let go and move forward. But it's almost kind of like this energy of, but I have so much time or energy into this and am I really meant to, to now turn and go in a different direction, right? But you're concentrating, here's the thing, you're concentrating on what you have lost, right? The, the time, the energy, the love, whatever it is, the resources, you're concentrating on what you have lost and not uh, concentrating on what you still have or what you can or or the experience itself it's almost like you're concentrating on the the tangible even though time <laughs> isn't really tangible but it is in a way right it's kind of like concentrating on what you've lost instead of the experience and the insight the wisdom the blessings that you have gained in a certain situation so you see the woman in this picture is concentrating on the flowers that she's lost the time the energy the love the the resources that she's lost that have gone into the water and she can't get back but you see she has two flowers left so it's concentrating on what you still have or what you have gained out of the situation will help this situation to move forward. So it's a little bit of this energy of stepping into because look at this beautiful energy. The thing is, is that you have bliss here and it says open your door to the divine, right? And the Phoenix Rising card, Regeneration. Okay, so this is coming back from a situation that you maybe feel like you've lost time, energy, resources, love, whatever it is. You feel like, wow, I've lost all of this in this situation. But it's when you can allow yourself to see the situation, be grateful for what you still have, or be grateful for the insight, the wisdom that you have gained in this experience, that is a win. All of a sudden, either this situation turns around for you or you see a new approach to this project, situation, relationship, whatever it is. It's kind of like, you know, really stepping into that energy of having grace and gratitude for an experience or a relationship, even if it hasn't kind of like met your expectations, met what it is that you were hoping to get out of the situation. It helps you to, to see the bigger picture of how this situation plays out in your life, right? To see the blessing, the lesson, even though perhaps you're disappointed about how things have worked out. Now, the interesting thing about fives too, right, is that it means that you're at that point. Fives are all about change understanding I'm not getting what I want out of this situation so how can I view this situation either in a different light or is it time for me to move forward right and I feel like for some of you you're staying in the situation but you're taking a new approach or for others of you you're deciding you know what <laughs> the flowers are in the water the flowers 
are no longer part of my life. It's time to let go of that, to let go of the energy of concentrating on what you've lost and allow yourself this rebirth, right? The Phoenix Rising card. It's allowing yourself to make the choice to go in a new direction or to see the situation in a different light. And either way, it's kind of like it changes your perspective of the situation and how it fits in the global picture of your life, the long timeline. So really kind of try, try to, if you can, take this situation and and allow yourself to see how it's playing out in the bigger picture of your life. That's really a strong message that I'm getting here. How does this play out in the bigger picture of your life? There's something you are meant to gain out of this situation. And what you're being asked to do at this time is to take a look at what you have gained out of this situation and not worry about what you've lost, okay? Because honestly, you never lose anything okay, that is not meant to leave your life, right? Allowing yourself to say, okay, I am trusting in the divine. Remember, it says, open your door to the divine. Allowing yourself to say, okay, whatever I've lost was really not meant to be in my life anymore. It played a part. It's leaving my life. I may be sad about that, but I have to make space for new situations or new sites, new beliefs, right, to come into my life so that I can move on to my higher potential. Wow, powerful energy there, Virgo. Well, um, I hope you have a wonderful week and thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now. All right, let's move on to Capricorn. Capricorn, let's see. We have the full moon in Capricorn here. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so there's something that is coming to play for you, okay, about something from the past, kind of like repeating, okay, a pattern or a belief, some type of conditioned belief that maybe you have had from childhood. But it's, it's literally taking this situation and kind of like, they're saying nostalgia. It's kind of like, you may have had like a childhood dream to do something or um, an insight, a belief as a child that life should work out a certain way or something like that. Um, it's kind of like you've been wearing a little bit of this rose colored glasses, if you will, about this situation or about how life is supposed to play out. And because of that, your expectations in the real world have never been met, okay? So it could be that you have always felt like if you at work, if you do a really good job, that you'll continue to be promoted, right? You'll be recognized for the hard work that you put in because you are such a hard worker, Capricorn. But what you're understanding is that the, I think what you're coming to terms with this week is understanding that that was perhaps something that you learned as a child or were conditioned to believe as a child that if you put all this hard work into something, you will be rewarded in the way that you want to be rewarded, right? But what you're understanding is that's not necessarily the way the world works. When we have certain expectations of how things are supposed to work out, and we don't have a little bit of flexibility in how things do play out, we just get disappointed. And I feel like you're feeling disappointed about a certain situation. But what you're being asked to, to take a look at is how does this play out from some belief that you were conditioned to believe as a child, okay? So it's kind of like, you know, when you were in school, Perhaps, you know, your parents expected you to get good grades, right? And so there was this concentration on really working hard for those good grades, right? But when you're out in the real world, it's kind of like the rules really change, right? When you're in school, it's kind of like you're taking a test. If you study for the test, right, um, and you put the time and effort into preparing for the test, it, you know, unless you're not a good test taker or something like that, right? It's kind of like you probably performed at the level. The, the rules were kind of like 
very cut and dry, especially like in math, let's say. There's either a right or wrong answer, right? So it's in the real world though, there's other things that come into play, right? There's office politics, <laughs> right? There's relationships, you know, there's the brown nosing factor, right? There's the bottom, do you know, profit and loss. There's so many different things that come into play. It's so much more complex than when you were studying for a test and then that would reflect also on your report card. So it's understanding that maybe some of what you learned as a child doesn't really apply in your adult life. And so here's the thing, you're, you're stepping into a loving your body, but it's really more than that. Loving your body is loving your worth, understanding your worthiness, that you're free of kind of like feeling confined to pleasing other people. And this is more of this energy of, you know what, I have to follow my heart. I can't just concentrate on trying to um, meet the expectations of other people, right? And also expecting when we're trying to meet the expectations of our boss or when you were a child, your parents, right? You put a lot into that because you're trying to please somebody else. But then the, the, the flip side of that, is sometimes that we set high expectations for other people. If we put a lot of time and energy into our work, we expect then our our boss or supervisor, our employer, whoever, or our clients to really and truly recognize the work that we're doing. It's kind of like you're, you're wanting the same thing, but here it is, it's kind of like understanding but if I'm not feeling balanced in a certain situation, I'm free. You have a horse spirit, you know, and it says freedom is yours. You're free to go in a different direction. You don't have to keep staying in the same place, playing out the same scenario over and over again. And whether this is career or a relationship, it's understanding, okay, I'm ready to go in a new direction. For some of you, if this is, you know, like family, six of cups can be family. If this is a family situation, and it seems like, the same <laughs> discussions are going on over and over again. You know, perhaps somebody, you feel like you can never please somebody that's in your family or a romantic partner. It's understanding, okay, I can love myself enough. I understand my worth enough that I can allow myself to go in a new direction. Capricorn, this is a really, um, this kind of message has been coming out in your readings for some time. So I feel like this week is really that kind of like that opportunity to take a look at, you know, where are you, you know, what are your expectations of other people, right? It's kind of like turning it around and saying, what do I expect of myself, right? And is that in alignment? with how I feel about myself, my worthiness, right? And am I following my own heart? Because I'm, if I'm not, it's time to allow myself to leave and not be so concerned about meeting the expectations of other people. I think one of the things you're learning is something about how when we have certain expectations of other people or situations in our life, that's when a lot of times we're disappointed, right? It's kind of like if you're communicating that expectation and that person or that situation is not, you know, changing, okay, in some way to help better meet your expectations, then, it, then it's time for you to understand. That's a healthy boundary that you're putting up. This is what I'm wanting out of this situation. And if somebody's not meeting you at least halfway, it's time to walk. It's time to allow yourself to go in a direction towards someone or some situation that is more in alignment with what you want for yourself. All right, Capricorn, I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now. Hello there, Taurus. How are you? It is so good to see you. I hope you're having a good day. Let's take a look at what um, the energies are for you this week. Okay, kind of interesting. Um, right off the bat, you have the round and round card. Capricorn had the same thing. And so did Virgo. So I think this is kind of like an earth sign thing. Looking at certain situations or beliefs or mindsets that you have um, around a certain 
situation or relationship in your in your life it's kind of like okay something's coming back around for you to take a look at um because you have the knight of cups <laughs> you have awakening um live in the moment and mouse spirit tend to the small things okay there is something your message is a little bit different um than virgo and capricorn i feel like there's something that's coming back around again that may have something to do with um not uh, not prioritizing I'll, I'll put it that way not prioritizing your your own your own well-being I'm going to say well-being in a way. Um, I feel like this has something to do with taking a look at how you're taking good care of yourself. Um, and that could be physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, okay? Because we have the awakening card. There's almost like you're having some type of an epiphany that there is a change that you, you need to make, okay, about how you are approaching some situation in your life and that could be about taking care of yourself right or taking care of your environment it's a, a little bit of taking a look at your life in general and asking yourself what parts of your life are you not happy with and allowing yourself to really tune in to some of the reasons, the small things that maybe you're doing that are preventing you from having the, the level of happiness, abundance, success, um, joy in that, in that sector of your life. So uh, let, me, let me pick out something. Say, um, say that you, you're not happy with the way your connections are, whether it's family, friends, romantic, right? It's kind of like you want more connection. You want this greater expression of love. But it's also about recognizing that we can't attract in greater expression of love if we're not expressing that to ourselves, right? And we're not expressing it to others. It's almost like... It's kind of interesting because it's it's almost like one of those situations. It's kind of like when I taught middle school, right? And, uh, you know, middle schoolers, when you're a middle schooler, you don't want to tell somebody, you don't want to express that you like them, somebody of the opposite sex, right? It's kind of like, well, I don't want to express that I'm interested in them unless I know that they're interested in me. It's kind of like understanding that you may have had or you may have at this time some connections where you're not really expressing your own feelings because you're holding back wanting the other person to express their feelings. And I feel like this is a good week to kind of like look at perhaps how you can express yourself more clearly, right? More lovingly in either a connection or it's almost like this energy of all your connections. I love this energy because it's also really kind of stepping into making sure that you're expressing your love for yourself to yourself, <laughs> right? Looking in the mirror and saying, hi, hey there, Taurus, I love you. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like allowing yourself to really take good care of yourself and not as a matter of, well, I have to do this in order to stay healthy, but really I love myself enough that I choose to eat healthy. I choose to exercise. I'm choosing to drink my water. I'm choosing to go to bed, right? It's almost like you're just shifting the way that you may express yourself. Yeah, I really love this. It, it kind of feels like maybe you have been feeling a, a little bit like you're obligated <laughs> in certain areas of your life, obligated, right, to hang out with friends or obligated to be with family or obligated to take care of yourself. This is an energy of, no, I'm choosing to do it. I'm expressing my love and my gratitude for myself and for my connections, right, by expressing myself and not allowing myself to just hold back, Wow, beautiful energy there, Taurus. All right, well, I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now. All right, let's move on to Sagittarius. How are you doing, Sag? So good to see you. Let's see what the cards have for you this week. Okay, oh, beautiful. 
Okay, things are happening for you. <laughs> you have the Eight of Wands. This is communication, action, um, people coming towards you, you going towards other people. There's just this energy of a lot going on this week to help you to come better into balance. This is the Libra energy. So you could be dealing with a Libra, right? It could be a romantic connection, family, friend, work. It doesn't matter. There's just a sense of having more balance, like more communication, more openness openness more let's take this to the next level whatever that might mean right it could be a client it could be working on a project with somebody it's it's just this sense of expansion which is so beautiful so much in your line and you know you have eagle spirit spirit has your back and then you have the rebirth right let go of the ties that bind both of these are about taking flight right of allowing yourself to find that balance right in either a situation or a relationship. And it's it's almost like I feel like there's this communication opening up between you and somebody else. And it's, look at the love in that photo, right? And it's just like so amazing. It's kind of like, I feel like for some of you, this could be even telepathic. It could be somebody that you haven't talked to in a while. And it's kind of like they're reaching out telepathically, maybe in the dream world or something. And then, you know, the communication can happen. The, this, there is a strong sense that this is somebody maybe that you have been at a distance from for some time. But it's this energy of, yes, it's time for us to come back together. It's time for this balance to come back into this connection. Wow, beautiful energy. All right, well, Satch, I'm going to leave it there. It's so exciting. Um, uh, I hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now. All right, so Leo, let's see what we have for you this week. I am a Leo rising, so let's see what we have here. All right, you have some truth that is coming in. Ace of Swords. Okay, this is... There's a, two kind of readings with this, and I'm getting both of them a, a, a truth, but there's also this sense of victory. Okay, finding, there's a sense of discovering or being, discovering a truth. Okay, whether that is you discover it on your own or somebody's bringing this truth to you. There's a, a, some type of truth that is coming in that also gives you a sense of, of victory okay <laughs> so it could be you find out some information and it it can either clarify something that you thought about intuitively it like in a connection like you may have intuitively thought something was going on in a connection or or whatever it is uh, and I feel like it has something to do with uh, finding out a truth about something that has been bothering you okay so it's it's not kind of like um, finding out the truth about something that you were hoping to find out like good news I'm not saying this is bad news but it's kind of like aha what I intuitively thought about a certain situation I'm finding the facts <laughs> right I'm learning the truth so not only is my intuition correct right it's also the energy of finding out some information that clarifies that you know, um, confirms your intuition. And this is really kind of interesting because you have the nightingale spirit, love is all around. You have the harmony, perfect balance, and then you have the building blocks, okay? So there's a couple of things here. This could be that you're finding out a truth of, of something that you had been thinking about, had inklings about, intuition about, right? That is helping you to build something in your life because aces are a lot of times new ideas right um something in your life that is balanced has lots of love right um it helps you to build your future and this could be you know it could be that you're you're you've had this inkling that maybe somebody likes you right or is that somebody from the past that wants to reach back out to you there there's this energy of i feel like this is really a relationship and understanding that yes 
that person really does want to be part of my life, wants to build something with me. Whether this is a business partnership, a romantic partnership, family or friend, there's just this sense that yes, love is coming back together, okay? Friendship, love, just a sense of harmony, okay? You have the sense of harmony harmony, perfect balance. Really interesting because Sagittarius, they just had the Libra energy, which is all about balance, right? Bringing something back into balance. A truth is being told here so that something can come back into balance, whether that's a family situation, friend, romantic. It's kind of like something is being enlightened for you so that, um, yeah, your, your intuition is spot on. Whatever <laughs> you are, are thinking, if you're resonating with that at all, whatever you have been kind of thinking, you are right. And things are going to work out that help you to have more balance and it builds something that is more balanced, either in that relationship or situation. All right, so I'm going to leave it there, Leo. I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now. Well, hello there, Aries. How are you? It's so good to see you. I have an Aries moon. So let's see what the cards have for um, for you this week. Really beautiful. It's so funny because um, I decided this week to do, you know, like all the fire signs together at the same time. And it's really interesting. The earth signs all, I did them first. They had all similar things. And now all of the fire signs have this sense of having more balance in your life, okay? Um, and they're coming out in different decks, but it's so interesting to me. So you have exchanging gifts, understanding that what you are putting out, okay, into the world wants to come back to you in some other form. So if you're putting out love into the world, love wants to return to you, okay? It's just the, the universal nature of balance, right? If you're putting out your your loving um, self in your in your work in your career in your relationships, then either abundance as far as financial abundance or love abundance or just joy in your life comes back. But here's the thing: <laughs> what we have to realize is that when we give out, we also have to be open to receiving. And there's something here, Aries. I'm getting this message that part of it is is that. Maybe you are putting out, but it's almost like you're stopping the flow of it coming back to you because you have doubts about, are you worthy enough for love to come your way, right? Uh, is what you're putting out into the world good enough for you to have financial abundance, right? It's understanding that we to have that flow going, that ebb and flow that we put out and we get back right? In order to have that, we have to have ourselves open to receiving it. We can't allow ourselves to sit in the cage and say, oh, I don't know if it, if I'm good enough. Will it, you know, you see how the cage door is, the top is open, right? Will the love, the joy, the abundance be able to get in? I don't know. Am I worthy enough of it? It's kind of like allowing yourself to stand up. Notice that the top of that cage is open. The angel could stand up and release himself, right, from this cage of self-doubt. You're being asked to do the same thing. It's kind of like if you had been thinking about sharing your gifts, your talents, your your creative abilities, your love, your, your friendship with other people, right, whether that's clients or friends, family, whatever, romantic partners, it's kind of like, Put, allowing yourself to put yourself out there, but then also saying, I'm going to allow people to come back into my life, right? Or abundance to come into my life in some way. Because yes, you have the enlightenment, you have the swan spirit. Time for a deep dive. I love this. And the enlightenment says, let goddess light fill you, right? It's kind of like understanding that there is that flow and so many of the times when we're thinking things aren't coming back to us, right? It's because whether we realize it or not, we're blocking it in some way with our own doubts of whether or not we're worthy to receive it. Or are we ready for it? <laughs> are we prepared for it? It's that whole energy of just saying to yourself this week, okay, I'm going to allow myself to put 
my love, my joy, my gifts, my talents out into the world. And I'm also going to allow myself to accept what comes in. And that is a huge thing, Aries. That is a huge, like I feel like you're opening your heart to receiving what the universe really and truly wants to send to you. Beautiful energy. <laughs> take, take advantage of this beautiful energy and don't, don't hold it back. I guess that's it. Give it a week, right? This is for the week of June 17th through the 23rd. So give it just this week. Don't have any expectations on what you put out there, right? Don't expect certain things to come back. It's just kind of like I'm putting it out there. I'm putting myself out there, my authentic self with a loving energy, just putting out whatever it is that you're you're doing this week in all areas of your life, right? Just kind of like opening yourself up and saying, okay, here it is, right? And also staying open and seeing what comes back. That's the key. That is truly the key. All right, Aries, I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, it's so lovely to see you, and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now. All right, let's move on to Cancer. Cancer, your birthday um, season starts this week, so happy birthday to all of you. I hope that you are getting excited about your birthday. I'll have your birthday um, reading up this week too, okay? So let's see what we have here. Okay, so you have some situation in your life that's unfinished. So this could be a relationship or some, you know, situation. It could be a health situation, a career situation, something where you don't have the answers yet. Okay, it's kind of like this this uh, to, to me a lot of times this unfinished symphony is kind of like a little bit of an open wound right it's like you may have done some healing in this situation but it's not like you have all the answers this is something that hasn't been able to close out okay so if it's like a relationship you may not be in contact with this person but it's kind of like you just still don't know where you stand with this person right? It, they could have ghosted you or, you know, it's just kind of like you could have had an argument, but then it's kind of like you just went your separate ways. There was no, I wish you well <laughs> at the end, right? It's just kind of like there's something here, but it is, they keep saying wound. So I think it does mean that there's something here that understanding that that situation, whatever it is, um, is it's kind of like still an open wound for you and i feel like this week there is something that is really and truly happening that is helping you to either heal this wound or to reconnect to this person um, because you have reflection and it says healing transformation okay so this situation whatever it is i feel like there's something happening and you know, for some of you, they're saying behind the scenes. It could be that things are happening behind the scenes. You're not seeing it in the 3D yet this week. But I feel like your spirit guides and allies want you to know that they're working on the situation behind the scenes. And for some of you, you're going to say, uh, we have the pig spirit, when pigs fly. This situation will be transformed, right? Because you have the transformation energy here, will be transformed when pigs fly and pigs don't fly. <laughs> so it's a little bit of that energy because what you're saying is, no, that situation is done. I'm moving on. I'm not going to think about that anymore, right? But that's why the wound is still open. And it says, use your mind wisely, right? It's, it's literally letting you know that what you are thinking is creating the block for this situation to be completed, whether that means reunited, transformed and brought together again, or at least closed out in a loving way right? Because that's the most difficult thing is, is when where the, the energy of the connection is not completely closed out and you have the three of pentacles. I feel like whatever the situation is being worked out, the three of pentacles is also spirit coming in to helping the two of you, or if there's a group of people, right, to come back together, to cooperate, to understand we can accomplish so much more, 
there's so much more love in your life when people work together. And that's what I think is happening here. And whether or not, once again, I, I have the feeling that for some of you, you know, it's kind of interesting. Your, your birthday season is starting this week. So it could be around your birthday <laughs> that you get some type of a message from this person, maybe that you haven't heard from or you feel like you're distanced in some way. It's a little bit of that energy of understanding that the divine is truly working behind the scenes to bring healing to the situation so that you don't have this wound anymore. It is an open wound, but I want you to know it's not an open wound just for you. It's also an open wound for the other person, okay? So um, I feel like that is a big part of it. So in other words, if there's a wound here and you're resonating with this, and it doesn't matter whether you want to reconnect with this person or you just want to close it out for good. Either way, it's understanding that your words, okay, are creating your reality in this situation. If you're saying this will never come together until pigs fly, guess what? It's not going to come together until pigs fly and that's not going to happen. So if you're really wanting some change in the situation, it's about understanding that your words really matter. It's really a little bit of the gift of prayer here, right? Of understanding that what you are asking the divine, they are truly working behind the scenes to have come together. But it's asking yourself, are you putting it out there to the universe, to your guides, to your angels? Are you saying, I want healing transformation in this? Or are you just kind of like saying, no, I'm not participating in this situation anymore and I'm moving forward, but also understanding that that is leaving you with an open wound. It's about asking for the healing that is for your highest good. I would put it that way. Ask for the healing that is best for your highest good. There is a need for healing in this situation. Whether or not you want to reconcile with this person or not, there is a need for some deep healing. Wow, powerful message there, Cancer. Um, if you're resonating with that, um, and you know, I'm sending you much love and, and, and light in this situation because it's a little bit of understanding that you first have to be truthful with yourself about how important this situation is and how it may be affecting your life, whether you realize it or not. Okay, it could be that maybe you're closing yourself off to other people or situations because this is a very painful situation. Understanding that it may be impacting your life more than you recognize. And that's why spirit is wanting this healing transformation to occur. Once again, it does not mean that you have to reconnect to this person, but perhaps putting it out there that you're ready for the healing that will be for your highest good in this situation. All right, I'm sending you much love and light. <laughs> um, and Cancer, I um, wish you a happy birthday. I will have your birthday video up this week and much love and light. Have a great week. Bye for now. All right, Pisces, let's see what we have for you this week. Okay, Pisces. Wow, beautiful. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is just you, kind of like stepping into you. And it's so interesting because your readings lately have really been about going within and following your heart and not allowing yourself to be kind of detracted <laughs> from what it is that you really want because of what other people are saying. You're stepping into this energy, new life, no place like home. Like understanding that you feel most at home with yourself when you allow yourself to, to go in the direction that is for your highest good. And perhaps for some of you, that means that you're moving to a new home. You understand that the people that are in your, your living environment or your work environment are not really in alignment with what you want for yourself. So I feel like some of you may actually be moving, you know, and maybe not moving this week, but putting that ball into place, understanding, yes, I, I no longer can stay 
in this home or this office, this work environment, whatever it is, this community, it could be a community, it could even be your country, right? It's kind of like, okay, this isn't working for me. I, I need a place where I feel at home, where I'm surrounded by people that see the world the way that I do or are more in alignment with what I want for myself. Yeah, because you have the starfish, spirit, and shine. Both of these are stars, right? Shining your light brightly and understanding that maybe the environment that you're in is not conducive to what it is that you want for yourself and that allows you to shine your light brightly, right? You could be in a, a toxic work environment or have friends or family that are trying to not allow you or are making you feel like you can't be the star that you truly are. This is the week where you're believing in yourself and you're saying, no, I know I can be a star. I can shine my light. I can share my gifts, my talents, my creative abilities th with the world and receive the abundance, the joy, the happiness, the financial reward that I'm seeking. Yeah, this is a beautiful energy of stepping into your own. And honestly, I think for a lot of you, it is also about recognizing you have to leave an environment or leave a group that you are with in order to be around other people that emotionally support you and what it is that you want for yourself. Wow, powerful message, Pisces. Well, I hope to see you again really soon and that you have a wonderful week. Bye for now. Hello, Scorpio. Let's see what we have on the horizon for you this week. Wow, we have the owl spirit coming straight out. <laughs> I love that energy. Let's see what else we have. Okay, you're manifesting something. You really and truly are. Um, you, you, there's something that you are trying to attract into your life. This is the law of attraction card. Um, understanding that your thoughts at this time are really important. And, you know, I'm going to say... I'm getting this message where uh, you see how there's there's th these three elephants, okay? And for some reason, they're kind of showing it to me as like different generations. And you would be this generation, okay? <laughs> so this could be maybe your grandparents, your parents, and then you, okay? Let's put it that way. And it's kind of a little bit like maybe you have been following somebody's lead, Okay, so like you, you've been in the same family business, okay, or you lived in the same town as your parents and grandparents or had some, you know, it could be even a religion or a belief system that you've had that has kind of like you've just been following the ancestral pattern of something. Um, and, and I feel like here's the thing. I think you're kind of like, you see this little baby elephant, right? They're all holding the tail of the one before. And there's something here this week where I feel like you're letting go of the tail of your parents. Okay, let's put it that way. And you're, you're understanding that by just staying in line and just moving forward in the same pattern that your ancestors have your generations right it's uh, you're you're holding yourself back from what it is that your heart truly desires it's kind of like i have to let go of this tail and i have to allow myself to to go in the direction that is best for me and it's almost like for some reason you may have been manifesting up to this point to follow right? To try to attract in what it is that your generations have kind of kept following, right? And now all of a sudden you're, you're seeing clearly that that is not the direction for you. You're igniting your passion, right? And it says, release your potential. You're understanding that if you're you're always looking at the behind of the elephant in front of you, <laughs> right? It's kind of like, you're not, you're, you're just like, keeping the status quo, let's put it that way, right? And you're kind of like, no, I have to go in this new direction. I have this insight, this wisdom of my own. I don't have to follow that insight and wisdom passed down generation after generation. I can go in my own direction and it may be a little bit slow going, but you're okay with that because the Knight of Pentacles is one of the best 
energies in the deck because it's getting up and doing the things that you want to do that you know you need to do in order to go in the direction of what your heart is desiring, right? It's allowing yourself to take the time and the energy to do what it is that you're meant to do. And knowing, okay, it may be slow going. It may be a little bit of an easier ride if I allow myself to stay in line with other people, generations, right? I, I can just, you know, stay in line. They're saying inheritance, so it could have something to do with, you know, family money, and it's kind of like, well, I have to, I have to toe the line a little bit, toe the line in order to make sure I get the inheritance. Um, so, you know, that that wouldn't play out for everybody, maybe, but for some of you, there's something like, well, I there's something that's passed down, you know, that may be valuable, and maybe a home or or a plot of land or, you know, a wealth of some sort. It's a pass down. And if I let go, then I'm going to lose that. But it's understanding that if you're just holding on <laughs> and looking at the behind of the elephant in front of you your whole entire life in order just to get some payout in the end, right? It's kind of like, what kind of life is that? It's not really an alignment. Yeah, because you have um, nurturance, restore your balance. I love this. This flipped out when I was, I mean, it wasn't, your card was really ignite, but this flipped out when I was, so I feel like it's an added message. It's about nurturing yourself. You know, it could be too that you understand that maybe you have a long line of relatives that didn't take care of themselves, right? Didn't nurture, didn't love themselves. And that you you kind of understand that, well, it's kind of like if that first elephant went and walked off a cliff, right? The other two would just follow suit. You're, you're understanding, well, I don't want to walk off the cliff. I want to have a life of joy and happiness. So it's kind of like, okay, if I'm going to stay in line with the elephants, then I know what my demise is going to be. <laughs> Instead, I want to nurture myself, go in a new direction, build something. The Knight of Pentacles is building something for yourself and not feeling tied to somebody else. Literally tied, <laughs> nose to tail, right? Literally tied to each other. Okay. Wow. Powerful message, Scorpio. Okay. So that might mean that May this week, you're going to start some new habits or, or start planning on going in a new direction, getting that spark back in your life about being happy about the direction that you're going in your life. All right. I'm going to leave it there. I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now. Hello there, Aquarius. How are you? It is so good to see you. So let's take a look at what the energies are for you this week. Okay, so there's something here about your authenticity, your, your reason why you are here, your life purpose. Okay, the why card is literally asking that question, why am I here? What am I meant to do? And your authenticity is about living your life in alignment with what your heart desires and what your life purpose is. I feel like this week there is something that's coming up that's helping you to understand that the only thing that's holding you back from being your own true authentic self and, and truly living the life that's in alignment with your soul's purpose is your own self-doubts. The Nine of Swords. It's kind of like... I don't know. What am I going to lose? It's almost like you're concentrating more on what you may lose if you step into your authentic self. What will I lose? Yeah, it says, let your truth be heard. It's speaking your truth. It's living your truth. It's not allowing yourself to be um, distracted or, or kept, it kept down, your light dimmed because of what other people may say. This is you believing in yourself, right? And it says, believe in yourself, squirrel spirit, <laughs> believe in yourself. Know that when you are in alignment with what your heart truly desires and really in alignment with your soul's purpose, that everything just falls into place. 
It's believing in yourself. It's believing in the universe, in the divine, that when you are allowing yourself to be on that authentic path and speak your truth, live your truth, walk your truth, that things just kind of like end up falling into place for you. So do not be fearful. You know, this is a lot of anxiety, sleepless nights, not allowing yourself to get too caught up in what other people may say. Allow yourself, this is a great time to allow yourself to step into your authentic um, nature, to listen to your heart, listen to your soul and go in that direction. Believe in yourself. I feel for a lot of you, you're taking a new path. You're going in a new direction, but know it's for your highest good. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now. Well, hello there, Libra. It is so good to see you. So let's take a look and see what the energies are for you this week. I hope your week is off to a good start. Let's see what we have here. All right, this is beautiful. Um, you're coming into a sense of, yeah, a, a being who you're truly authentically meant to be, okay? Um, it says, sing your own song, the canary spirit. Is stepping into this energy, it's the number 12, one plus two equals three. And three is really about allowing yourself to, to connect to the divine, to work with the divine, and to be authentic to yourself and your soul's mission. And I love this because you have the joy um, and it says embrace the, the blessings of life and peace card, right? It's just this sense of coming into the sense of balance and happiness, peace, abundance, just feeling like the, the world is your oyster is what they're saying. The world is your oyster, right? You're moving away from turbulent times and into much more calmer waters. The six of swords is understanding the, the worst is behind you and now everything is smooth sailing. And this is a beautiful energy of recognizing that the reason that this is occurring, the reason that you are able to move on to these happier times is because you're more in alignment with who you are. You're, you're speaking your truth. You're walking your truth. You're living your truth. You're being more authentic to yourself. You're understanding you're more of your soul's mission. You're, you're aligning yourself to what it is that your heart truly desires, but also sharing yourself in a more authentic way with other people through your work, through your relationships. It's a beautiful, like I feel like for some of you, you know, there is a strong sense. I wanna say it is kind of interesting. You know, we have one, two, and then two, three. It's almost like, I, the, the message I'm getting is that things are literally falling into place. It's like one, two, three, right? Like things are falling into place for you after a long time of feeling like, ah, oh, nothing's working. And maybe a lot of people or situations had to leave your life and, and that was difficult, right? But it's helped you to kind of step more into who you truly are, be more authentic to yourself. It's kind of like, well, if people that I was trying to please in my life have left my life, then I guess I better just start being who I truly am, right? It could be that maybe you feel like you've lost so much that you finally allowed yourself to find just peace and joy in being who you are. No longer trying to please other people. And because of that, all of a sudden, things are, are kind of like falling into place for you, that one, two, three. Moving on from the difficult times and moving into much more peaceful times. I, I also feel like for some of you, Libra, this won't resonate with everybody, but there, there may be a sense that you're coming out of a dark night of the soul. Okay, and once again, that won't be for everybody, but for some of you, I'm getting this energy where you may have been in a period of the dark night of the soul for some time, right? Kind of going into that deeper dive of reviewing, you know, who you were and allowing yourself to let go of some of the conditioned beliefs or, 
or the behaviors that held you back from being your true authentic self, right? And now you're coming out of that dark night of the soul. You're seeing the sunshine again, right? If you think about it, look at the yellow that's really kind of popping in both of those. You're seeing the sun. The sun is rising for you. It's the phoenix rising but it's because you're more authentic to yourself. So I feel like there's a little bit of a message there that maybe this week or as we're going into cancer season, there's a little bit of energy of checking yourself <laughs> every time you're making a decision. It's it's not allowing yourself to slip back perhaps into old habits, routines, or beliefs that you are moving forward and it is time to leave perhaps some of that older version of yourself. I know after I went through the dark night of the soul, it's kind of like you feel like you're a totally different person, right? And it's allowing yourself to say, yes, I am this new person and not having regrets for what maybe you you know regrets of what you have done in the past is like make amends you know ask for forgiveness if you need to but it's the energy of moving forward it's kind of like okay i am no longer that person i see the world in a different way once you go through a dark night of the soul you see the world in a different way right and a lot of times we look back <laughs> and we're like i can't believe i believed that or i can't believe that i did that Understanding that was a, a more unawakened version of yourself. Now you see the world in a different way and it's allowing yourself to move forward and giving yourself grace, forgiving yourself for any, any actions that you've done in the past. And once again, asking for forgiveness, you know, if that is part of your healing process, you know, asking for forgiveness, but also allowing yourself to forgive others and forgive yourself. Um, really important message there. All right, Libra, I'm going to leave it there. Wow, what a powerful, kind of like just a peaceful energy. I'm so excited for you because I know that you have been struggling with this for some time. Um, and that whole um, essence of forgiveness has really been in your readings for the last couple of months. So I feel like you really are on the other side of this period and things are just looking up for you. I'm so excited. All right, much love and light to you. And I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now. Well, hello there, Gemini. How are you? We're in the last days of Gemini season, so I hope things are going well for you. And let's see what we have on the horizon for this week. Okay, so you have Ant Spirit, okay, which is the time to collaborate. It's the number one, all right? You have Sleep, Slow Down. You have the hanged man, and then you have the yang energy. This is the divine ma masculine energy of taking action, right? Now, it's kind of interesting. I'm kind of giggling because I'm a Gemini son. So it's kind of like, you know, um, a, a, two different speeds here. <laughs> One is go slower, and this is I got to take action. I got to go. I got to do it, right? Uh, very much Gemini energy, uh, you know, maybe feeling like there's so much that you want to do. And, you know, perhaps you're not sleeping enough. You don't have the energy to do everything that you're wanting to do. Jupiter is also in your first house now, right? And it's the, a time for, for now and for the next year, Jupiter will be in your first house of recognizing that you're being asked to look at what what is it that you want your legacy to be? How do you want to be remembered? What do you want people to say about you when you're no longer here? So it's not looking about your life right here at this moment, but it, there is this sense of what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to experience? What do you want to be able to relish between now and the, the end of your life or this lifetime? And that is why there's this energy of, I got to go, I got to do it, I got to get it done, right? But you're being asked to kind of like slow down, right? You don't have to get it all done today. You don't have to get it all done this week. In fact, it's almost like this energy where you're burning yourself out because you're trying to get so much done in a short amount of time. It's allowing yourself to take a different perspective, perhaps, Part of it is, is that you're feeling like you, 
you kind of have to do it yourself, right? I, I, I have to do everything myself. There's this energy that it's time to collaborate, right? It's time to bring in other people to help you, to ask for help in some areas that maybe you need some help. But it's also about allowing yourself to collaborate with the divine, with your spirit guides, with your angels, to know that there is a different perspective. I feel like you're kind of like narrow, narrow focused at this time, thinking that things are, are supposed to be a certain way or you should have uh, certain things accomplished by now. It's, it's almost this energy, you know, it, you've just had your birthday or you're going to have your birthday this week and it's it's like I, I gotta get it all done I didn't get what I wanted to get accomplished this last year or this last five years whatever it is and so you're in this frenzy of trying to get things done but I almost feel like you're you're pushing so hard that you're you're maybe making mistakes or you're doubting yourself. Things aren't falling into place. Let's put it that way. Things are not falling into place the way that you want them to because you're taking action, but it's almost like you don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. Okay, you see they have pieces of puzzles there. It's a little bit like, I feel like you don't have the overall plan. It's like trying to put a puzzle together without a picture of what the puzzle will look like when all the pieces are put together, right? It's like, uh, I mean, I've tried to do that before and you can do it, right? But it's so frustrating. It takes so much longer. It's, do you have the plan? Have you taken the time? To really kind of like allow yourself to make the vision of what it is that you want. I don't think you have the plan, Gemini. I think that's part of it. You may have pieces of the plan. Maybe you have pieces of the plan, but you don't have all the plan. It's, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's a little bit like decorating a room. Like if you don't know what, what you want the room to look like when it's done, and you go out and you're you're purchasing paint and and, and um, furniture and art and lights or whatever, <laughs> right? And you, you're just going out and you're just buying stuff, right? And then you bring it all home and hope it'll all fall into place. And then when it doesn't, you're frustrated, right? It's understanding. Well, if you had a vision for what that room would really look like, if you just go out and you uh, you go to the furniture store and you say, well, I need a couch for the room. Okay. And then you go and you're just wandering around and you, oh, I like that couch. I'll buy that couch. Okay. And then they deliver the couch. Right. And then it's kind of like you go to the paint store and you're kind of like, okay, um, yeah, let me look at all these paint chips. Right. Oh, I really like this color, but you're not thinking about the color of the couch. You're not thinking about the, the theme of the room right? or, or the feeling, the emotion that you want the room to have. So, you, oh, I like this color. So you just buy that color, right? And then same thing with art. You just walk in, oh, I like that. Oh, yeah, that, that painting, that really draws, I'm, I'm really drawn to that painting. I want to buy that painting. But what happens if the painting doesn't go with the paint color or doesn't go with the couch or all three don't go together? It's, it's like you can't just pick and choose things that you like and hope that they all will fit together, that the puzzle will come together. It's kind of like take a moment. Don't allow yourself to just kind of like grab at things. There's this energy of just, I got to get this room decorated, right? <laughs> so, okay, I'm just going to go shopping here. Yep, deliver that couch. Get Oh, yeah, I need that paint, you know. It's kind of like take a moment. See the bigger picture. Allow yourself to see this in a different perspective. What is, first, go back to that, gem, uh, that Jupiter in your first house. What is the, what you want people to say about the room? Okay, when it's finished, do you want them to say, oh, that's bright and energetic? Or do you want to have people come in and say, oh, that's a peaceful, tranquil room, right? It's kind of like allowing yourself to, to get into a, what is it that you want people to say about you, right? 
But in whatever situation, or I, this is almost like a life. It, it's, it has the energy of just revamping your life and saying what is really important to me. But it's kind of like allowing the pieces of your life to fit together. To understand that if you make your career your top priority, that you're letting go of relationships or your health or something like that. It's kind of like I feel like you want all the parts of your life, your career, your relationships, your health, right? You want it all to kind of like come together, to fit together. You don't want them to be separate sectors of your life. And in order to do that, you have to get a different perspective of how these pieces fit together. You have to come up with a plan. What's the overall theme of your life, Gemini, right? If you want the overall theme of your life to be balanced, and I feel like there's something about balance here, right? Um, then it's also understanding what changes do you need to make in order to have that balance? What does that balance look like? Do you have a vision board, right? It's kind of like really allowing yourself to see far out to how you want to be remembered and then backing it up and saying, okay, what do I need to do? Like having the vision of what you want the room to look like before you go shopping for the furniture and the paint and the art. Very interesting message. Thinking about not just each sector of your life as individual sectors of your life. It is perhaps, and it's so funny because Jupiter is in your first house and this is the number one, right? How do the pieces of the different sectors of your life, if each one of these puzzle pieces is a different sector of your life, how are they fitting together? Are they balanced? Are they all the same size? They may be different shapes, <laughs> but are they all the same size? Are they going to work together? In, in other words, if you want to have, like, you want to put all your time and energy into your career, okay? We can say that we want it all. I want career, I want romance, I want travel, I want family, whatever it is. But understanding that if you're, there's only 24 hours in a day, you do have to sleep, right? <laughs> so say you have, let's uh, say you have 16 hours a day to, to really work on your life, the different sectors of your life. Put time and energy into the different sectors of your life. If your career is taking up 12 of those 16 hours, you only have four hours left for your own peace and tranquility, your, your exercising, taking good care of yourself, your relationships, the fun and enjoyment, entertainment, travel, right? It's understanding that, okay, I may need to have a different perspective of life, of what my priorities are. When I look at the bigger picture of my life and how I want to be remembered, for some of you, you may have at one time wanted to be remembered as a CEO or a, a big business person, right? But now you're understanding at the end of my life, is that how I want to be remembered? Or do I want the connections in my life to remember me in a different way as someone that was loving and kind and giving to them, right? And had your priorities in a different alignment. Yeah, this is very interesting with the hanged man here. You're being asked to take a different perspective, to look at the big picture of your life and and not to say, but this is this is important to me, so I'm going to put a lot of time and energy into this and then I'll work, I'll, I'll put all my time and energy into my career and then I'll work on romance or, or whatever. It's kind of like, I feel like you're being asked, no, it's time to start living the life that you want to be remembered as. Balanced. Balance your life now because it's almost like you're kicking the can down the road, right? I'll, I'll get to that once I get this in alignment, there's something about getting it all in alignment now, changing your priorities today, not changing them when something else happens. Yeah. And I think for some of you, there is an energy of a new connection coming in and you could be kind of blocking it because it's like, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll have a romantic connection 
like if you're not in a if you're single right now i'll have romance in my life once i get my career in order once i lose 10 pounds once i blah 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 it's kind of like no that's available to you now so why are you putting it off it's kind of like allow that space to be there right it might mean that you have to shrink another sector of your life a little bit so that there's more space for that new person, that new relationship to come into your life. I think there's more that wants to come into your life. It's almost like you're not allowing it to come into your life because you feel like you don't have a piece of the puzzle yet. And yet you, you already have it. It's so interesting. <laughs> it's really like you're living, you also, you're living the life. You have the ability to live the life that you want down the road. You have the ability to have it right now. If you allow yourself to reprioritize where your time and energy are going and you get a better idea of the vision of the world that you want to create for yourself, the life, the legacy, how you want to be remembered. Really interesting energy there, Gemini. Okay, I'm going to go think about that myself. Well, I hope you have a very good week and I hope to um, see you again really soon. Much love and light. Bye for now.